Here's a cleaner, smarter way to create containers. Usually we'd add a max width to keep our content from getting too wide, margin auto on the sides to center it, and to make sure the content doesn't touch the edge of the screen, we add some left and right padding either to the section or container. We'll talk about the pros and cons to those two approaches later. This works fine in most cases, but there are some places where this extra space can cause some issues. So a cleaner way to handle this is not adding any padding to the section or container, and instead using a calc for our max width. This container is 100% of the available space, minus 50 pixels times two, so minus 100 pixels. That way we have 50 pixel space on each side. Now this is acting like a true container. It's hugging the edge of the content and it's just 100 pixels less wide than it would usually be. But we still want this to have a max width like the container above. Now to do that, we could replace 100% with 1000 pixels and this would work fine for larger screens, but it wouldn't work on smaller screens. Instead, we need to swap between 1000 pixels and 100% depending on screen size. So to do that, we can use min. Min compares two values and it uses whichever one is smaller. So on large screens, 1000 pixels is smaller than 100% of our screen width, so it will use the 1000 pixels. But on mobile screens, 1000 pixels is much larger than 100% of our screen width, so it will use 100% since that's smaller. So now this is going to work just like our more traditional container, but without the extra space on the sides. So on smaller screens, it's 100% minus that 100 pixels. And on larger screens, it's going to cap out at 1000 pixels. So it stops scaling up at our 1000 pixel screen size, just like we'd expect. Another way to create containers is to put the padding outside the max width. This container has a max width of 1000 pixels and no padding, but it's wrapped in a parent div that has 50 pixels padding left and right. When we compare this to the first container that had a max width of 1000 pixels, but the 50 pixels padding was inside, this first container feels smaller. And if we were to check out how they're working, we'll notice that this first container reaches its maximum size at a thousand pixel screen width, so right where we set our max width. But this other container keeps growing and it doesn't reach its full size to a thousand one hundred pixel screen width because it had 50 pixels padding on its parent on each side that was preventing it from reaching its full max width. Now we can create a calc that works like this container without needing the extra parent div that adds the padding. And to do that, we just have this container and its parent has no left and right padding. And we're just comparing two values. So by default, the container will be 100% minus 100 pixels. And it'll stay that size, keeping 50 pixels on both sides till it reaches the maximum size of 1000 pixels, meaning it's not going to reach that maximum size till the screen size is at least 1100 pixels wide. So it's working just like the container above it. So now that we know that we can have a calc that works either like container one or container three, the question becomes, should the max width of our site include that left and right space or not? Personally, I prefer to have that left and right space included inside the site's max width. There's a couple benefits to this. And the first is when using fluid sizes, we usually want the sizes to start scaling down as soon as the container starts shrinking. And for this first container, it's easy to know that points at a thousand pixel screen size right at the container's max width. But for these other containers, we need to take that max size, a thousand pixels, and add to it the horizontal spacing. So this actually starts shrinking down at a thousand one hundred pixel screen size instead. If we only need to figure that out once, that would be easy to plug in. But if we ever need to change that horizontal spacing to say 100 pixels on each side, we would need to re-update all of our fluid sizes because it's changed the site max width. If we keep that horizontal spacing inside the site max width, then no matter what we change that horizontal spacing to later on down the line, we don't need to update our site max width. Same thing if we're using maybe a CSS media query that does one thing right above the site max width and another thing below it. It just future proofs our site a little bit more to keep that horizontal spacing inside the max width. Now we can streamline this even more by moving this max width and left and right spacing into variables. In design terms, the space between columns is called the gutter. The space outside of the columns is called margin. And then of course we have our total width here. 
So over in our variables, we have a variable now for site margin to control that left and right space and site width to control our max width. We can make the site margin fluid or do anything we want there. And if we head over to our calc, we would just want to replace this pixel width with our variable for site width. And that's going to be a rim value. And we'll replace this uh, pixel value with site margin. And again, that's a rim value controlling that left and right space. And we might want to reuse this whole calc in other places, maybe not just directly on a container. I would love it if one day Webflow allows us to add calcs directly inside the variable panel, but for now we can just go ahead and save this inside an embed. So I'll go ahead and create a variable called container main and I'll set it to this full calc we just created. And I'll create another variable called container full and we'll go ahead and set that to a calc of 100% minus the site margin times two. So this one just goes full width. It has no sort of max width, but it still keeps the content from touching the edge. And that way we can use either version. So we can just create those as native variables just so it's a little bit easier to use. And I'll create one called container main and I'll create another one called container full. And we'll just leave their value set to zero pixels because it's being updated inside the embed to the correct values. So now on this container here, we can go ahead and switch that over to a variable and we can use container main if we want it to have its max width or container full if we want it to go almost to the edge minus that site margin. And we can use just the site width in some places that we need that. We can use just the site margin for special calcs or different places we need that. So this gives a lot of flexibility. So because these containers hug the edge of their content, we can easily position elements absolute to the edge of the container now. We can apply a background color directly to the container when needed instead of using an extra div inside. And we can update the max width of the container if we wanna go full all the way to the edge or even indent it by a column. And we can change this across breakpoints easily because it's all saved in variables. So that's an overview of how to set up containers in Webflow.